It's, it's pretty amazing. We look at life in general. We usually talk about a variety of different health components, but one thing that we haven't really dove into is financial and how it really affects your mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional health. So we are bringing in, like you said, the legend, Gary Theraldson, president of Theraldson Companies. Um, I've known Gary for years, and I think the first time that I met him, he was swinging a, a softball bat. And he, like I said, legend. Not <laughs> only is a legend in business, but he is a legend on the field. Oh, okay. Has been a, an amazing man in, like I said, with helping with so many different things within the community. But he also sponsors, I'm very fortunate to play on the, the Theraldson softball team for the last however many years. And it's it's been truly an honor. It's been great memories, experiences, and then just coming off of becoming the world world's masters champions it's it's pretty awesome to say that uh to be part of your team so thank you gary for joining us today well i'm glad to be here and uh, i'll hopefully give you a few words of wisdom wisdom huh <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what i'm looking forward to today's conversation because my outlook on finances is i need to spend money the economy needs me <laughs> you know <what> I <laughs> don't know how to save it very well <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's it's step by step. So, Gary, you know, you are from the North Dakota area, small town, so on and so forth. You know, I really want to know that, you know, sometimes people look at individuals who are very successful in their professional life, and they feel like sometimes they were handed it, um, but what I know is that you've worked for it. So let's talk about your start and how you really became engaged with business. Okay. I think I'll go back to my youth. Yeah. You know, I went, I, I'm from Daisy, North Dakota, and... Uh, uh, I, I was probably blessed to be able to uh, live in a gr very good family and uh, and and all, even though we lived in a very good family I I didn't live at home two of my in my high school years I actually worked out I worked for farmers up in the area uh, getting up at 430 in the morning <laughs> and then uh, getting done with the chores at 7 at night and going to school in between and so you know I've been there and I know what it's like to uh, have to work hard and uh, to be a good person and I, I always tried to do my best I, I know even when I was young uh, and I and I played three sports in high school including doing all that and uh, uh, I, I totally and I'm a person who totally enjoys whatever we're doing you know I, 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 I think the biggest thing that anybody can do is to be a positive thinker. And if you, if you think positively, even when things go bad, if you can find good things in the bad, in the bad that may be happening to you. Because uh, the next day you don't know what's going to happen. It might, be, it might totally turn your life around. And so I think the thing is that I've been through the ups and downs of four recessions. And so I, I know it, it goes really good and then it can go really bad. And uh, um, so you just have to keep calm and, uh, and uh, do your best and, and uh, always. And then so at, as I became an employer of people, I wanted to, to bring the same kind of attitude to, to my company. And so and, and have my attitude of my employees become the same attitude that I have so that that we, we want to be the best uh, whatever company I'm in I, I want us to be the best at, at whatever we do if it, my main business of course is the hotel business I, I built over 470 hotels wow. can you imagine wow. that and, and I owned them all the first 390 I owned them without any without any partners and, and I started with nothing. I, I remember going back to <clears throat> my, uh, after high school, my first job was for a dollar and a quarter an hour. Oh. And then my first teaching job was 5,800 a year and 6,300. So I, I got a very slow start. But I, I learned that there's only three ways to really get rich, okay? One is you gotta inherit it, and, and I was not gonna inherit it. Uh, two, you, you have, have stock in a company and, and it, it, and it ex, ex, uh, goes up a long way. And, and the fourth was real estate. So I, I picked real estate because I, I, I took whatever 
small amounts of money that I had extra and tried to buy real estate. Now remember, this is the 70s. So <laughs> things were a lot cheaper than it was today and it was probably a lot easier to get into the business than it is today. The, the problem with business today, it, if you want to get into the business, the capital requirements that it takes keeps a lot of people that could be in business out of the business and, and you don't get the ch same chances as I did because um, because of the times I was able to uh, buy an, a house and fix it up and resell it, buy an apartment house, fix it up and resell it. And so I, because I, well, every, if you're in business, as we know, right, you, you have to have the capital to, to expand, right? And so I, that, so I figured out a way to do that. And, and, and I, I wouldn't let anything get in my way. Uh, I, and when I say get in my way, I don't mean uh, anything bad. I, I always look at what other, I want other people to do for me what I would do for them, right. you know. And, and, and uh, so, and I, when I really, uh, re I think when I really found my niche was when in about 1982 and we started building houses and homes and so forth and, and uh, um, uh, now by that time I'm 37 years old, you know, and so <clears throat> uh, I, I bought my first hotel, Valley City, North Dakota, Super 8, Dev and then, then I did Devil's Lake and that started a, 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 a business that I truly loved. And, and not only that, what I find is that the people that, that work for me, the one thing I, I really see in them is they truly love the business of, of taking care of customers. And, and they, they get a great feeling. And, and so, so what I did is I, I said, well, how can, you know, I, I, think, I think of my employees as part of the family. And, and how can I make uh, my employees uh, feel good about a long term being with me long term and uh, that not only getting a salary but I, I wanted to make them rich richer than they ever could be working for most other companies there's always exceptions but I thought I could do that and so over the years I continued to build the hotels but what I wanted to do was share and I always share I even in the early days when we didn't have a lot, I shared it with my employees I, uh, by I, I giving them stock. And so then, uh, so the, the, my employees, uh, 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 and then I started a employee stock ownership plan, which I, I always look for ways to accelerate things for my, not, not only myself, but I needed to accelerate things for my employees. And so what that did is, is yes. uh, uh, I, I I set up a company and that I I sold it to them. They paid no money down, and 15 years later, this is crazy numbers. My employees over that period of time were able to get 600 million dollars wow. in their employee stock ownership plan. Wow. Holy smokes! The, now you were the top ESOP company correct the plan in the in America was it in the 90s no, we were in the top 10 top 10 yeah yeah of the largest ESOPs in the US and, and uh, 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 but you know really the, the the tributes gotta go out to the people that work for me I can only do so much my the people uh, uh, they 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 were the ones that really created the company my it was my guidance but they created, uh, and, and, and the thing is, what I found the difference was when, in, um, is when employees acted like owners, you, 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 they, they were much better employees. And, and, and you know, Fargo has some great employee stock ownership plan companies, and, uh, uh, in which I am really happy to see some of my, uh, my friends, that, you know, I, I, a good example that everybody knows is Shields there. And yeah. you talk about a successful company, and, and I think I, I w my feeling is the idea that their employee stock ownership plan 
that they have is what continues to drive them. Besides, they have great people at the top, you know. In I myself too, putting me in the top, but my levels of people that have worked for me, they're absolutely amazing. And you know, in we really got tr tested when this COVID hit. Oh, I sure. mean, it. Um, and and if it, that's when you really uh, you really see a, a step up in how do you how do you get better during a bad time and 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 that was so amazing to me. So you know, March hit right, COVID hit. So how many current hotels do you have, Gary? And then you know what what was your guys's action plan, knowing that some of those were closed down and some were still open? I mean, there was so many ebbs and flows through this whole quarantine. Yeah, we had um, 60 hotels at the time <clears throat> that COVID hit, okay? And then I had 20 under construction. So, uh, and, and so uh, we shut down 25 hotels during that period. And, uh, and then uh, we, so we had 35 left open that sort of provided us. Uh, uh, but if you think about this, we went from down to 5.2 million in sales that month to 17 million in, in, in September. Wow. You know, so, in, in, uh, so slowly as things progressed, we, we, they, we were shut down with most of them for over two months. And then, then we started opening some of them back up and we still have two that are not open yet, which we were going to open next week. Um, and, but the thing is, we learned to manage them better. We had, I think, whenever whenever there's bad times, is a great opportunity to become better at whatever you do, right? Mm -hmm. And and so, uh, my key people, that's they put a plan together, and 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 uh, and, and I just say, go get them, you know, <laughs> you know, because um, you know we've got a couple thousand people, and so you. you uh, employees right now and, and uh, I can only do so much and uh, uh, you have to have great people that work for you and uh, any any company that is, is doing uh, great things they have great people a strong and team they've got a strong team yeah absolutely and and uh, uh, and so uh, so now now we got <clears throat> uh, actually then we opened 10 of those 20 that were under construction most companies had to shut down, especially new construction, because the capital went away. I was fortunate to, to have the uh, most of them, uh, the capital ready for those properties. So, but there was three of them I didn't, and I had to struggle going through the w with the banks and to make sure that I was able to get the capital to finish the because the, the, we. I, I had a habit, I just, because I always had the cap to do it or I knew how to get it, I, I started a lot of construction projects without, out, uh, a loan. And, and most people have to um, uh, um, have a loan. So I, I, one thing I seen like a, in, the, in the news the last, I have to bring this up, Trump has debt of $420 million. Well, I'll guarantee you, I have a heck of a lot more debt than that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll tell you another thing. <laughs> These main companies in town have, have more debt. Some of them have more debt that are than, than Trump. And so, you know, it's, it's sort of a joke when <laughs> people who are supposed to be so knowledgeable don't even know the difference of, of, of in, in Trump's world to to have four hundred twenty million dollar debt is a drop in the bucket for him, right. and and uh, and because he has to, in order to just manage him, you got to have money to manage him. And it, let's face it, folks, if we can't if we can't manage our our businesses, we can't employ people, and that and that's the whole idea. How can we continue to build build companies that employ more more and more people? That I think that's what it, it really is all about. You know, I have two over two thousand a day. In three years, I'll have almost three thousand people. You know, I think that I'm doing a good deed to try to make sure that I can hire more people to make a good living, uh, and and to and eventually 
become successful. Several of my people over the years have went on to, to on, out on their own, build motels, and to understand what uh, the, the secrets of success. <laughs> and it's kind of humbling too, right? So the thing is, being an employee and then stepping out on your own to start building your own business, you know, then it's it's kind of a little wake up call. And I'm sure you've also received some calls like Gary. Holy smokes, I had mm -hmm. no idea, but also grateful for the opportunity for them to be able to step out on their own. Now, staying at a couple of your hotels, you know, with traveling for softball, so on and so forth, what I can say is, hands down, you have amazing employees. We had one of the females that was working at the front desk. I mean, she went in the back and brought us a couple boxes of, she's from Hawaii. So she was handing out boxes of chocolates literally from Hawaii to <laughs> us to, you know, going above and beyond for a young boy that I was trying to put some batteries in his dancing robot. And then um, your employee went and was trying to find a screwdriver just so we could help um, out this young little guy so he could have some excitement. But, you know, when you're greeted with a smile, and you see that the individuals are truly genuine, then you know that you're employing the right people because they're going above and beyond their call of duty and making sure that you feel comfortable um, and really appreciate your stay. So, I mean, you've done some great things. We're gonna take a quick break, but you know, to build, I really wanna know the, the time frame. So when you started with your vision of building one hotel, how did it grow so quickly into over, you said, 470 in, in your time frame, right, and, and building back up? So when we come back, we're going to learn more about Gary Tharleton. We all have to do our part in changing the world. Let's be honest. Let's look outside. We know, we know <laughs> there's time for change. We're hitting the reset button of life, of business, of whatever is in front of you. You always have an opportunity for that, you guys. So I want you to make sure that even though it might feel heavy, it might feel dark or seem dark right now, it's understanding that in the darkness is where we actually find light. That's where we find personal, professional, and spiritual growth. And we are here with Gary Theraldson, and I tell you what, he has literally paved his way in the hotel business and so many different facets of life. And one thing we were talking about off air is passion. We can be passionate about business, but if we don't have a clear vision, it's really hard to reach goals, success, so on and so forth. So. You know, you started out with a passion of real estate. How did you define your vision? And did you know that it was going to be like one hotel and all of a sudden 400 and some, here we go? <laughs> uh, no, I, in, in fact, the, the, the vision was to, to own a couple of hotels. That, that's what, that was the initial vision, you know. If, if I could just own a couple of hotels and run them good, I would make a, a real good mm -hmm. living. And, uh, and you know what happens is uh, as we get into something and we if we want to to uh, excel the pace it, it you continue to uh, uh, create new visions and, and, to, and, and not only to create new visions that go on growth but also create new visions of how, how you how you're gonna take care of all your employees uh, and and so the visions that you have are the most one of the, is to make sure that uh, their vi visions are the most uh, mo most important thing that you you have to create the future uh, the future for you. And and uh, and I remember when we got restarted back up in 2013. I was going to build four hotels a year, right? Well, as you heard earlier, I had 20 under construction, so. So we had, uh, I still, when after we sold the, the, the properties to Aesop, I still had 20 left. Now we have 70 uh, in, 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 in about six short years. And, and, uh, but you, but you, if you know, and, and basically you study the personnel that you have. Can they handle it? And, and, and will they have the same excitement as I do? Uh, and, and so, and, and how do you create that excitement? Well, a lot of the crea creation of excitement is I make them partners with me in a way because I provide them stock that they're going to make their life their life better long term, right? And uh, so you have to have, you, you gotta have not only plans for, for me, but you gotta have plans for your employees. And, and where will your employees be in 10 years and 20 years? And, uh, uh, and if you if if you if you always, I think the biggest people that have trouble with vision is 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 the people that don't include 
their okay. whole their whole uh, entourage of employees. And uh, and I'll tell you one thing: I couldn't have done ten percent of what I've done without great employees. I mean, and and the thing is, they were the, they were the same way when they came to me. The one who runs operations today was hit 21 years old. Now she's well, 30 years later, you can see how old she is. And, uh, 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 and so, uh, but the growth in people because of wanting to do a great job. You got, you got and 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 I I think that's sort of what I try to get across is. What, what do you want? And, and how, how do you want to grow? I don't even have to di direct people as much as I used to because they want to do it. Yes, I direct people in certain things because I want them to continue to do better. Uh, and and uh, 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 sometimes what happens is whenever people, I, when I look at it versus them, I may see things differently. It's just like you, Mariah, you see things differently. If you come into our hotel, you might look at things differently than I do, right? But in, in we got to look, make sure that the guest experience is, 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 is one of the best for them. And so the, if the guest experience is great, guess what? They come back time and time again. And, and we, before the COVID hit, can you imagine? We ran 80% occupancy in the hotel business. The industry was doing 64%. You know, that, that's almost, if you take 25% of 64, we're 125% better than the competition. And not only that, we ended up uh, with, by treating them better, we, we ended up with a lot more profit because the, the profit all comes in from the break even point and, and above, and so it was easy for us to uh, accelerate our profit, and then of course accelerate our growth, right? Because mm -hmm. it takes money uh, uh, to, to to build a hotel. So anyhow, and not only that, what I did, one of the things I did, as you probably know, I have a, a book, um, Seek, uh, Secrets of Success, and and what I did, what I always did, we I go to the convention, of course, every. The thing is, like my people say, I can't um, employ something. We don't can't get too close to you because you got everybody else around, uh, Todd wanting to talk to you, right? <laughs> and so, uh, and ask me questions. How do you do it? Why do you do it? And and so forth. And I always shared it. I I feel that I I can always share things with anybody to what help me make us better, and it will help make them better. But I look at the fact that. You know, it makes me sharper. If I'm going to help them, I have to be sharper than I was before, right? Mm -hmm. So I I have to do things better, and and uh, and so it was a uh, evolution that we just uh, create. So we created. So, and so what happens is today, it, it's it's amazing. You know, most companies are 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 struggling. They're not paying the banks, and you know we pay the banks. We we are we're profitable in the toughest of times, and if we can be profitable in the toughest of times, we know what what is ahead when things turn around. And you know, I, I think I, I maybe I was fortunate. I went through. This is the fourth recession we went went through, and and and, and we get hit the same. And but what it does is it. Whenever you go into a recession, you're going to get. If you are alert and you you will find you you can become a better company every time there's a recession because you're going to it's going to make you really drill down and make sure you are doing everything better. The foundation is strong. Now, with those four recessions, I, w I would like to know what you learned. Okay, if you could choose one thing from each recession. How did that make you as a entrepreneur, as a, a business owner, and your employees better? Um, okay, um, so if you can I, think of I think the thing is everybody knows that that you have when things got get bad, you're gonna have to run your hotel different. Yeah. And you're going you're going and, and people that your employees um, 
are going to have to do things better or or one of the things we did is you know typically managers didn't have to run the front desk in the early years uh, that's what I did is I had the managers run the front desk but as we got bigger so what we had to do is try to keep the staff less so that we could um, uh, uh, continue to try to break even anyhow I mean obviously we had months like April and May I mean we were lo losing money every every company in, in the business was, was losing money but if you look at it uh, I, and the other thing I learned is is product type what type of product is going to be best in a recession That's awesome. and so the, the, this last recession we've had the products that we built uh, were uh, which is called extended stay you know, is that uh, uh, because that's a type of product that that is really in high demand because uh, right now it, uh, because uh, sometimes it's the, the you have longer stays and it creates a higher occupancy the other thing is I one key thing I would say is that the product you build what you want to be with the uh, if I'm going to be the best I have to be with the best companies right so we're talking about the hotel business so the best companies I know are Hilton and Marriott and I and I was I'm Marriott's largest all-time franchiser franchisees we've had around 290 franchises wow. in, in my lifetime with them great company and and not only that in these times they are re really good um, and and so uh, I think in order to if, if we we're going to be the best we we have to have the best uh, best companies we have to have the best location dynamite location so when I I build a hotel today I know ex I I know within five percent of what it's going to do when we get done I mean there's so many tools today and information that can help you uh, 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 project what you need. That it, if if you if you follow the right path, you're going to be successful. And uh, like they say in the real estate, it's all about location, location, location. One hundred percent. Yeah, I want to be in hard barriers to entry, barriers to entry where people don't don't want to go. Good example, California. California is the the most uh, the governmental state you ever seen because they they put so many regulations on it. So what we did is we went into California. Half of my property by the time we get to a hundred in 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 around 2022, um, properties over 50 percent of them will be in California. But the thing is, it's so underbuilt because of all the regulations out there. But if you get them built, they're like a gold mine. They just produce and produce and produce. Even in this time, we run about 80% in California. Ridiculous. Wow. Wow. Now, our east, the east stuff in the east is down. But um, uh, in, in, in so, uh, I figured this out quite a few years ago. California was good. I just didn't realize uh, as we got going, more, building more and more, we learned that how g really good it was, and uh, uh, so, so knowing the demographics, knowing where to build location, and pinpointing. You know, Gary, you've had a lot of different recognitions throughout being. You know, again, um, in the top ten in regards to ESOPs, to being featured on Wall Street Journal, to Forbes um, being listed. Um, and the Forbes 400 to a Hunter Conference Award for Excellence and Inspiration. You know, it's it's amazing to see that you started with a hotel in Valley City, North Dakota, to now sharing with us just little bits and pieces in regards to what you have found. But when we come back, I really want to talk about advice for entrepreneurs and business <coughs> plan and, you know, pinpointing, you're talking about projections so on and so forth. I know that when I first opened my business, and I think this is for a lot of individuals who may be listening out there too, is when you're first starting a business, how do you know what to budget for certain things or for marketing? Because I had no clue. It's like you spitball, you've got all these different cups and you fill all these different cups and you're like, man, I spent more money than I thought I was going to spend and I don't really have a whole hell of a lot coming in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so 
We're going to uh, come back with some advice for entrepreneurs. And, you know, there's a lot of individuals who are struggling right now professionally. So what are some different ways or different tips that you could provide? You've got your secrets of success. Yes, for real estate, but a lot of those can transition clearly into different professions as well. We, uh, we've been talking behind the scenes on the importance of understanding your passion. And you can share a hundred different secrets with so many different business owners. But if you don't truly have the passion for what you're doing, it's hard to see and reach success. And I think that's the key thing is you're going to have struggles and the, the true grit, the perseverance that you need or require to be successful is you have to get into the trenches and understand that no matter how low or how deep or it feels like you're never going to get out of the hole, um, understanding that uh, eventually you will, but you have to keep digging. I think that's the key thing. So Gary is going to be sharing some advice for entrepreneurs because clearly you know like you said you've gone through four recessions and continue to rise Gary I mean your vision has to be way up here because I have never met somebody as driven as you you've sold X amount of hotels but now you're building them back up again and like you said 20 hotels underneath construction in 2020 hey man did you think about that <laughs> 2020 and you've got 20 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's kind yeah. of crazy so Gary what is what have you found? What is some advice that you would share to professionals right now that are struggling? Well, the, the, I think you're exactly right. You got what you have to have the passion to become to get to where you're going. Okay, and 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 not only that, you, which includes a, a tremendous positive mental attitude. And when things go bad, you got to be able to bounce back and 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 and, and turn a, a negative into a positive. You know, the, I always think, you know, you ask the question, give uh, some advice on being an entrepreneur. If, you, if Those are the most important things. Because the, the other problem you got, you, capital is always a problem, right? As you found out when you yeah. started. And capital was a problem for us. And, and capital is a problem a little bit today even. Because my remember, my lifeline got cut off when COVID hit. I mean... I had, I was producing enough capital, enough profits to, to fund these hotels. Now it's not there. Uh, even though we, we are profitable, it's not, our profits are, are cut down by about 75%. So now the, the money I, I had, so now you have to figure out how to do it. And the thing is, you, you, you got to keep your mind open. So what can I do to make things better? And, and what, what it is today may not be what it will be tomorrow but you have to be so flexible that when things bad happen that, that you, <clears throat> you can work your way through it and so uh, and th that's why I say you, you know and I watched you over the years Mariah in the passion that you have for your business and the passion that y you have for helping people it, it is second to none in 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 but that's the same type of passion that you have to have in business or wanting to win a world master championship right, right? You, you, you know I, I think the thing is I, I was there at the tournament and I watched uh, our team uh, when things look pretty bad you guys dug deeper and, and found a way to win and I think you, I always thought watching your, the, our team versus the other team, I felt we were going to do it because I just felt that I, I watched, I listened in the dugout stuff. You guys were always being, firing up everybody and working as a true team. I didn't see that as much in the other teams you were playing. And that's it. Life is fairly simple if you think about it. But people want to try. You don't, you don't take sh shortcuts either. So when, when you're, whenever you're starting a business, make sure you know every detail as possible. You never know it all, but you need to have have a, have a plan that that because that can be successful. And and, and the problem is <clears throat> when you're starting a new business, you don't know what's really going to be successful, right? Right. So you're going to have to be willing to spend a lot of time learning what make how to make your company better. And what that is is different with every on any uh, enterprise that you may start. Uh, but knowledge is, is, is power. And so um, make sure you have all the background. 
what I did in the early days, I picked the franchise because that was easier for me. But the cost of going, doing a franchise course is, is costly. Right. But in the long run, if it, if, if it can make you successful, uh, that's the important thing. Because uh, what is it, 80% of the small businesses are, are not around in five years? So you, you're, 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 you're bucking up against a tough wall to be successful. In, uh, have, so basically what you're saying, Gary, is you have to invest in yourself in regards to improving who you are individually as a person but then professionally. And I think a lot of people tend to invest in different areas. But you have to in invest in growth. And when you invest in yourself and growth, then you're able to invest in your employees and their growth as well, and then it, it all comes together. And finding the right team with a common mission and a common goal in mind is really, is really crucial. And I think, too, what I've learned in the past, too, is not every single employee is going to have the same mission that you have. Um, and some people tend to go through the motion. So then it's asking the employee, why are you coming to work today? Is it because when you pull into the parking lot, is it about the fact of this is what I'm going to make, this is what my paycheck is going to be, or is it the fact that I'm pulling into the parking lot because I want to create change, I want to impact somebody's life today. I mean, granted, our, our professions are different, yet they're the same. So, yes. you know, it's, it's learning on when you, when you hire employees, you want the individuals that are full of fire, um, that have that positive mindset and are ready to learn and ready to grow. That, that I, you said it very well, super. Uh, and uh, uh, it's all about <clears throat> it's all about passion, and, and 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 you need to create that passion in employees. And it's hard, you know. You, so you got it. What? So you always have to. The chain of command has. I can only do so much. So that we need to develop it at the next level. In the next level. And the thing is, if you don't pick the right employees you can't get there right we both know that uh, so you have to have the right player players that are going to be passionate about winning right mm -hmm. and in uh, um, because we can put I think over time most companies can put the winning strategy together um, if they really think about it. and the strategies change from I'll guarantee you from the strategy you first had to to today in in, in is totally different, and you got you got to uh, grow and and, and and develop and 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 that's how you how you become successful because it it's more about the men mind than it is about the business. If if you because you you got to with your mind you got to be able to handle any diversity, mm -hmm. and trust me, there is going to be diversity in any any. Uh, any business. Any business. Yeah, and I think too is everybody who, or anybody who wants to be an entrepreneur, and I think it comes, it ties or correlates with health and wellness. We all want instant gratification. The reality is, I would say the first 13 years of being in business was really a learning phase for me, and I wasn't ready for certain areas because I hadn't learned, or I haven't developed or grabbed that piece of the puzzle for myself and added it into play. So it's like, you slowly start integrating all of these different pieces of the puzzle to start creating your wholeness. Um, but if you haven't experienced those things or if you're not ready for it, it takes time to reach that level of success. How many years did it take for you? Okay, so 1982 is when the first hotel in Valley City. When did you really start seeing or reaping, you see the return on investment on your time? I mean, it wasn't 1982, right? So it wasn't the first year of business. How long did it take you, Gary? Uh, you know, <clears throat> like it was, uh, in 1982, I had bought two hotels. I built one in 83, two in 84, five in 85, <clears throat> none in 86, and then two in 87. And then I, I somewhere along the, the way there, a after that, I sort of got really interested in, in uh, uh, in growth, and uh, I had uh, uh, I had other people that were close to the company that had the same vision that I, that that I had that I had where we wanted to grow the company. Yeah. So in about 1990, <clears throat> 91, uh, we were. Uh, we built 10% uh, of all the new hotels in the country. Now think about it, we only built 20 
There was only 200 built. Today, uh, th that, that's monthly. <laughs> but <clears throat> but the thing is, we had a, uh, the guy made up, one of the construction guys made up a shirt. Uh, 200 by 2,000, okay? Well, that's 20 a year, right? Well, we blew that away. We ended up with almost 300 by the by the turn of the century, right. and, and and it it not only did I have the vision, but my people, you the you got to get your people to have the same visions that you have, in order to be tremendously successful, because you you're only you got to have people to multiply your efforts. Absolutely. So. What would you, if you were to give um, a couple tips, so clearly one is passion, right? And building yeah. a, a strong, solid team of individuals that are breathing the same, the same passion that you're breathing, right? So what are some other tips of advice that you would share with entrepreneurs? Well, I think the other one, you know, I, what I did in the early days is I read um, positive thinking books. Uh, and and or, or, or the, I remember this one with the, uh, all the verses and in in and, 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 and I sort of um, I think that that's that that's you you, you have you, you have to have the right mindset today the problem with starting a new business it's so capital intensive so you have to if you and where are you going to get the money if you're if you haven't worked some for someone place else and had had a time time to to save it, right? Yep. So it, it's really hard unless you have rich relatives or something that can borrow your money. But that's because sometimes it's, it becomes the Achilles heel, right? Yep. You're not using your own money, so you don't have the same. Pa a lot of these people don't have the same passion to be successful. So um, you know the thing is, before you go into any business, you, you better have a great knowledge of how you're going to make be, make it successful. In other words, a business plan that you could make successful, right? Mm -hmm. Well, and I think too, you know, we spoke about how it kind of got started too, Gary. Literally in three months, building a business from the ground up, physically, and all of those components. And um, I had no idea. I mean, I put together a really fast business plan, and it was proof that it took however many years to grow, change, transition, but. I didn't establish the strong foundation that I needed to initially and now let's be honest most businesses aren't going to be starting from the ground up and open their doors in three months because of clearly current times and times have changed as we we've both seen um, so if you don't know exactly how to start or where to start there's so many different um, places to contact score you know small SBA all of these different areas to look at to kind of help you to see is, is this the direction I truly want to go? Am I doing this just because I want to say I own a business or are you doing it because you're passionate about opening a business? There's a different components to look at and you know the last thing that you want to do is be um, unprepared and that's like with life. We want to make sure that we're providing as much knowledge as we know and one of the books that I don't know if you've read this book is uh, Blue Ocean Strategy. Have you read that one? No, no. Um, so <coughs> it, it talks about the fact of marketing. You've got the blue ocean and you've got the Red Sea. Why would you want to swim in the Red Sea where everybody else is doing the same thing when you've got a blue ocean to swim in? So it's about creating your own niche. It's about creating your own marketing, your own strategy so that you're not swimming with the fishes, literally. Yeah. Um, so I agree with you 100% when it comes to reading and learning more about business and, and your mind. Because if your mind is breakable, so is your business. Yeah, you know the thing I did when I was when I first started out, I I, I tried to talk to every successful hotel guy I could, mm -hmm. so I could learn from them because I I knew nothing. Basically, I knew nothing when I got into it. I just I just was able to. I had some money that I that I thought it was a good idea, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, so uh, in 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 that's why so I. That's how I did it. That that's why when I go to kind of conferences or stuff, mm -hmm. and people come up and, and they ask me questions, I, I'll always take the time to to answer their questions and try to help them in any way. Because one of the things, obviously, is that you hear they all they all wanna, all want to be like me, okay? Yeah. Because of of um, uh, because of the tremendous growth and the success in the success story that we we have created and and. Uh, uh, and a lot of the people that I talked to have been very successful uh, with multiple hotels. And uh, uh, I don't know if I, I helped them in any way, but at least I, I, I put the fire in them to go do it. And they, they found then, and, and 
and, and, and I always tell them, talk, continue to talk to people that are there and done it, and, and, and if you pick up one idea, it's worth going to a convention, I say, to, that is going to improve your, improve your business. And I think that's a key thing that you spoke about, is that you were once in there, those individual shoes, and recognizing it's kind of like a kid who's got a baseball card waiting for that player to come up to get an autograph. Yeah. I think it's the same thing when it comes to business, is if you want to resonate higher, if you want to reach for success or something more, you have to surround yourself with individuals who have done it and ask the questions, be open to feedback, to insight, because if you think that you know it all, you're going to be humbled very fast. And that's the key is be open to opportunity, be open to feedback, because the thing is, you may have one idea, but if you have other individuals that are giving you insight, wouldn't it be great to have like one of the best ideas instead of just a good idea, something that helps resonate towards the top? Yeah, that's exactly correct. Is it's uh, uh, it because you you would think uh, yeah look back if one person can make that business successful, then I I can make it successful too, right? Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, and the thing is, you you got to be a you got to have the right attitude in your mind to say. And some people, you know, they don't want to even go ask other people questions. It, it's hard for them yep. to go ask other people questions, right? Yep. And, and and that's a tough way to if you're going to run a business and you're not going to ask people for for advice, and you think you know it all. Uh, trust me, you will have more pitfalls than it than than you want mm -hmm. and so I think you, you just got to be open about and, and talk uh, talk about how to make your business better all the time mm -hmm. and uh, some so and you don't have to take all the all the information but if you can if, it just if you can find something that will help you create the, your make your business better so personal growth trickles into professional growth I think is the key thing to understand is work on yourself, the stronger that you become as an individual, um, and then helping individuals too. So success is measured in so many different ways. It can be measured from financial success, it can be measured from what you do within the community, it can be measured with how you, you treat your family and how you instill morals and values within them. But one thing is when you do reach success, because you have the opportunity and you can get to that point where you're financially free, but you have to understand that it's going to take hard work um, an extremely strong will and mindset to do it, but knowing that it's possible. So when we're looking at 2020 and all of the different things that are going on right now, it's very easy to have your spirit broken right now. So this is the opportunity when Gary was talking about the power of the mind. This is the time for you to really dive in and, and work your mind. Um, instill different things, read different things, listen to different podcasts. How can I grow while I'm in this this phase, because when you're working most of the time on your are in your business, now this is the opportunity to work on your business, which starts with you. It, you, you said it exactly correct. It, it, it's it's you need to continue to keep your mind to to, to make sure that you, it, your 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 mind will grow and and continue to help your business and and uh, and the other thing I found out, you know that. Once I've got there, m my job is I'm sort of like a person that keeps sharing and telling. It, what's so important, I think, is let your let your employees know how much you care uh, ab about them, and 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 uh, because they, they want to hear from you, right? They, the more interaction you can have with employees, the better better your company's going to be, because th then they know you're you're a common person and. Uh, and you, you don't think you're, you're you're better than them, and, and uh, that they want to work for somebody they really care for, right? So uh, that that was so important to me that I need to spend time talking to my as many people as I can. As you know, two thousand it's tough to talk to them all. But when I go down and, and visit my hotels, you can see I I go in and talk to the staffs and so forth, and. Uh, uh, they, they appreciate it, and you know, and so they have questions, and, and I'll answer their questions. It's so important to make your employees feel good about who they're working for, right? A hundred percent. Well, Gary, what I want to say is I appreciate you, 
and all that you do <coughs> within our community. Um, you've done amazing things. You've remained humble, where sometimes people lose humi humility too, or you know that humbleness when they get to the top. And I know that this isn't the top for you because I know that you're driven and you're going to continue to reach higher and higher and higher. And I love the fact that you appreciate all of the individuals that are working, the troops, right, the team, yes. the players, because that's really what it creates or what you need is this really strong team. And when the, str when the business grows, it's because of the team that's with you. And I don't want to say beneath because they're with you. And that's the yeah. key thing is side by side. And then also, too, I want to thank you for um, the opportunities on a personal level in regards to playing on Theraldson's softball team. It was exciting. It was mm -hmm. so much fun. Um, the experience, the memories, and just the fact to be um, around positive, positive people. It's uplifting and it's nice to have a different type of fire lit coming back from Las Vegas, you know, playing in Arizona, so on and so forth, too. It, it was it was an awesome experience. So thank you so much for being on the show and for what you do. Oh, you're sure welcome. Yeah. Thank Here you. We go.